back to the Monday special which is now quickly becoming the Monday special series my training vlog uh, a lot of you are asking about Fitz's training vlogs and he just hasn't got back in the bandwagon since he's been back from his uh, skiing trip in the uh, the Alps but uh, hopefully we'll have some training vlogs from Italy later this week by the way if there's anyone from Rome listening and you have any recommendations of where we should train uh, Jiu Jitsu or weightlifting preferably or somewhere with just bumper plates and a barbell would be nice so I can get some squats in That'd be very helpful. So today's training session, I um, I'll be honest with you. On Friday night, so the first time in a few weeks since I rolled with my fingy poodles and fingers going really well. So we just literally did a whole class of sparring, and it was the first time I kind of rolled in anger in a few weeks. And so we did like eight or nine rolls. So just it was a reasonably small class. I think there was like eight or nine of us, and we all just rolled with everyone. So I was in bits on Saturday, and uh, so I did no session. So this is Sunday session. Uh, body feels very good Mo shoulder mobility is good front rack mobility is good uh, just a very long warm up but there was one thing in this session that was really kind of uh, annoying me and so was this one of those things uh, is it sore or injured so on the inside of my knee there's just this kind of pain at about the bottom of my jerk dip around that depth so there's actually no pain in the jerk dip but if I'm squatting now it's the left knee, which was the, I suppose, the, the worst of the two knees from last year when I had those uh, issues. Right knee is perfect, touching wood. And the left knee isn't that sore. We're talking like a four out of 10 pain maybe, but it's just something that I need to address uh, now at the kind of start of the training block, you know? So this is one of the things I've talked about, take it slow. It's one of the times where you can very easily just get injured and an injury that'll hang around a lot is in your prep phases, so especially if it's a prep phase coming back from a long layoff so i am just trying to address it it's it's mostly it's kind of a when i dip it's kind of like an instability like so there's kind of a, not a jarring motion but i can feel the lack of stability in my knee so the funny thing is i know it's not a acute injury it's not tendonitis so there's no pain it's not there when i do anything else during the day it's only at that particular angle it doesn't get less as I warm up, interestingly enough, or it gets slightly less. It's not on any uh, tendon. So I was running through the treks in my head, and I was running through, and it's only been since I started training frequently again, and I have been doing my prehab, so I know it was one of those things that was missing from my warm-up or one of my prehab exercises. So I was running through the checklist of things that I'd done last year, and you would have seen in the Rebuilding Mylar review. So I was checking my hip airplanes, I was checking my single leg squats, uh, zero pain on those, good control, no issue doing multiple sets and heel taps. And I was running through them and I was checking the hip airplane, checking the bottom of the squat, ankle mobility. So as I've mentioned, my left ankle has been tighter for a while, but I've been working on it and I should have paid attention to last year, but I didn't, you know, whatever. Uh, so I've been paying attention to it now at the moment and it's getting very, very, mu it's getting very much better. That's not a great sentence. It's getting a lot better. So it's a lot more even from both sides and I've just been working hard on it. So I was kind of running through things, just warming up my shoulders as well, the general warm-up. Uh, shoulder mobility is feeling good, nice and loose. So hip mobility is nice, very, very deep. And I uh, was just running through things, and then I thought about it, so I'd done, you'll see me in a second, just jumping on my single leg, seeing if it was, uh, if that was a tendon pain, patella, for example, it would be an indication of maybe tendonitis, but there was no pain on the single leg hops. The pain didn't really change that much after a warm-up. It didn't, wasn't drastic before the warm-up, so I knew it wasn't a tendon issue. So then I did one of the last things in the check, which was a, I think you should see in a second, is the single leg glute bridge hold. So that was one of the things uh, Aaron uses at di diagnostics for the lower body. And on the right side was pretty chill. There was, I could feel the contraction of my glute, but it wasn't too much of an issue. But then on my left leg, which is the side of the knee pain, the there was kind of a kick to one side as I stepped up from, or I kicked up to the, the left hand glutes to the single leg bridge and there was a lot it was instantly a lot of vibration in my left glute so a lot of pressure on it the motor control is quite poor so likely something that's just deteriorated a unilateral imbalance from side to side so the fix here is just literally practice those glute warm-ups or those single leg glute bridges in the warm-up um and just kind of progress from there very minor issue it's useful to have those series of diagnostic tests and things to look for 
Uh, I could train away fine without it, especially at the moment, but I really wanted to pay attention to it and just get on top of it now before I start kind of in earnest and do a lot of weightlifting and a lot of squatting or heavier weights. So it's a prudent just to get to it now. So that's why I spent a very long time warming up. I think it nearly took 20 minutes to do the warm up because I was trying to figure it out and get on top of it sooner rather than later. You know, this is what we were kind of talking about in that are you hurt or you injured video. It is something that is very important to get on sooner so those single leg will just be my warm-ups for now and hopefully that will help address it uh, so this session i was doing so back snatching so last week i started back snatching i did some no foot stuff if anyone follows me on instagram you would have seen in my story some just no foot things uh, as the i saw the doctor last week for my finger he said it was good uh, probably another three weeks he said in the splint I asked him, asked him, I was like, what if I tear it again? And he was like, meh, you can just leave it in the splint again and it'll heal up again. So very reassuring how blasé he was. So little some snatching, still no cleans. The issue with the cleans is that finger kind of jamming underneath is just too much of a risk. It's not a huge issue. So I'm back doing some push presses, jerks from rack and some snatches. These snatches is fine, especially with the straps. So I'm pretty happy with that. The bottom position feels great, very stable. All that overhead stuff is very beneficial and I'll keep that up for another few weeks as well. So tonight was the first time snatching basically in a few weeks and very few snatches done in the year of 2020 and it's the 13th of February already. What are times? What are we coming to here? So just worked up to literally 60 kilos for some snatch from the floor and some no foot snatch after a while then. I felt pretty comfortable so back to do the full snatch. Uh, so you can see me actually here in this particular clip that I'm just looking at my hip mobility. I know the hip mobility is very good, it feels very free because I've been paying attention to recently. The internal and external rotation is good. Seeing it like hops, no problem. Doing the hip airplane seems there's a bit of a difference. A little bit on the left side, it is not as free or as controlled on the left hand side as it is on the right hand side for example. Also you'll see I'm wearing Gabriel's new pants which are phenomenal by the way. Very very impressed with those pants. So got down tried the single leg glute bridge right inside was perfect there was very little tension in my ass uh, until i did a couple of reps or a little fatigue pushed up on the left hand side now you can't see from this angle but i was kind of pushing away from my leg so there's a little bit of a kick and then there was immediate kind of that you know that low, low motor control you have in a particular muscle when you do a, a movement you're not used to so it's kind of basically my glutes were vibrating so it's a good indicator of probably what's an issue so the remedy for that like i said is to get back to those and just kind of keep those my warm-ups which is something i was doing last time you know this is the kind of thing we're talking about as well is that if so eventually something might drastically change in the structures of your hips or your arms or your legs or whatever it is in the organism that eventually you may not have to do your rehab anymore or your prehab or the likelihood is as long as you're training intensely the activity that's causing that issue may always be something that will cause that issue and as long as you do your remedy stuff you could be in that nice balance but it may be it may be that you get to a certain stage where the activity is just kind of an antithesis to whatever joint you have or whatever the issue is and you just may have to do that kind of prehab and rehab stuff for as long as you do the activity and you know there's nothing really wrong with that the activities are intense and if you're training hard something's going to hurt so you might as well be aware of what it is you need to do so you can just see me warming up with some no foot snatches overhead feels good nice and loose in the bottom nice and deep just doing no foot stuff uh, if you go for a long period of time without snatching and you kind of come back into full snatches the timing can just be a little bit off depends on the person so i just like to do the no foot things it's not really a huge issue it's just to do something do anything at all with uh, full snatching just to get back to the movement again so to start with the hangs a little bit of high hang just trying to be conscious and not pulling up my arms, being fast under the barbell, being loose in the bottom. Main issue on those was just trying to feel out my knee. So just a teeny tiny little bit of pain or kind of, it's a hard to describe. It wasn't so much a pain, it's more of a, like it's a lack of stability and then pain rather than instant pain. I think all you guys know what I'm talking about. It's that kind of injury. It's very hard to convey the feeling of an injury, I suppose, over, over uh, communication. It's easier to understand the feel of it. So then just work down to low hang snatches i feel like low hang snatches are very very productive the high hang snatches are great for speed but i feel like low hangs are great for positional stuff especially getting back into training so I just worked up a couple of sets and reps of these still maintaining the overhead squats because 
I will keep those in for another while as I mentioned there is no amount of overhead stability work that you can do that is detrimental no one's ever gone fuck my overhead was too stable and that's why I missed that snatch so there is no problem working it in so then worked on after a few sets of warming up with the no foot stuff so it's quite comfortable foot moving nice and sharp here pulling under nice looking forward to getting back into kind of heavy sessions of weightlifting as in high frequency and doing a lot of volume and practicing weights but uh, patience with that you know again I think on this concept of this the patience around having minor always minor issues you know with the finger and maybe that knee you just have to have a little bit of patience focus on what you're doing it will come back if you're smart with your training and you know what to do to work to these six E's nice and fast no issue I will see luckily for the time period left that I have on the splint for my finger I have the weights to still be light so I won't have to have the dilemma of wondering how heavy I should go up in the snatches if I have uh, you know still have the splint on so it shouldn't be an issue so just feeling these out getting used to start position the muscle memory is there it is no problemo it's the benefits of lifting for quite a few years nice and fast timing is everything good quite happy with all this overhead squat looks good feels comfortable so all around positives from that now the jerks were a different story timing of my jerks was just a little bit fucked up mostly i think because i was kind of cautious with the knee it's not even that sore it's just something that's one of the main issues in weightlifting when you have pain and ideally you'll get rid of the pain because the uh, fear of pain or the anticipation of pain is something that can really fuck up your technique now obviously not doing jerks for a while is something that can also really fuck up your technique so that's probably the bigger issue here overhead position is nice i was saying the fits it's funny you know when you don't do a lot of weightlifting for a while and you're doing something like jiu-jitsu you forget how to go fast at weights you forget that you have to go fast so remember i was talking about in that video where you won't go fast unless you actually try you don't randomly start sprinting unless you try and go fast and it's kind of one of those skills in weightlifting that you have to learn you have to try go fast to be fast so that was kind of the main thing i was kind of focusing on those jerks then we moved on to squats i was pretty happy just to move on to pulls but the knee felt fine um i definitely wouldn't call it an injury at the moment it's just something i just need to focus on i suppose so i was going to work up to like 170 by three body weight at the moment is we are the other evening i was after shit so i was 101 with clothes on so fluctuating a few kilos but uh probably down maybe five or so kilos down to four notches on the belt so you know someone is asking how am i planning on increasing my strength and cutting weight and i and i mentioned the last one i am not because you cannot so you can feel on some of these they're just worked up to 170 for a triple uh, the funny thing when you're cutting calories is you know you the fluctuations in how you feel are very drastic you know how your peaks of strength are obviously much lower so obviously i'm coming back from a break and it would be a little bit different if i had been in good shape and started my cut but the most important thing to remember from this is that uh, you don't panic you don't change your goals you don't go okay i'm gonna oh fuck i better gain weight i better stop the caloric deficit and, and try to gain my strength back you just go nice and patiently you go okay whatever i am um, the goal at the moment is to cut weight because this is a benefit for my long-term goal or i've decided that this is the main goal i want to focus on for me it's a benefit to my long-term weightlifting so some short-term decreases in strength are of no concern there's no pressure don't feel stressed just accept that that's what's happening for your goal for the time being and uh don't get stressed stay on the same path and it'll work out well thanks for watching guys